He sounds like a bad guy from an episode of Power Rangers, but it'll take a lot more than a Megazord to clip this bird's wings. And if he thinks for one second that dragging us into the realm of Twilight is going to give him an advantage, joke's on him. We already saw those movies. R right? Come on guys, right? Altraxian is the fifth boss in Dragon Soul and is a one phase encounter. Throughout the fight, the NPCs will grant players unique buffs that make the fight more possible. But this is, at its core, a standstill DPS check. As of our testing, the boss had around 185 million HP and spawned no ads. You'll want to bring two tanks, six healers, and a balanced mix of DPS. We'll remind you that this video and strategy guide were created during the PTR testing, and if the fight changes significantly when it goes live, we will create a new guide to reflect this. Thank you. Altraxian will begin the fight by pulling everybody into the Twilight Realm with his Twilight Shift spell. Players in the Twilight Realm are susceptible to his Twilight attacks. Being pulled into the Twilight Realm will grant all players the spell Heroic Will. This causes the player to concentrate for 5 seconds, removing them from the Twilight Realm and protecting them from Altraxian's attacks for the duration. The primary source of raid damage throughout the encounter will be Unstable Monstrosity. Arcs of Twilight Energy will constantly erupt from the boss, dealing high shadow damage every 6 seconds, split evenly between all players in the Twilight Realm. Altraxian becomes more unstable the longer he is in combat, causing the spell to tick faster as the fight goes on. Additionally, the instability makes it impossible for Altraxian to parry attacks. Around every 45 seconds, Altraxian will begin to cast Hour of Twilight. This lengthy cast will deal very high shadow damage to all players in the Twilight Realm, and upon completion will cause all players in the Normal Realm to be pulled back into the Twilight Realm. If less than 3 players are hit by Hour of Twilight, the Aspects, or NPCs, will take the damage and the raid will wipe. After Hour of Twilight has been used once, Altraxian will begin to occasionally use Fading Light. This spell applies a debuff to his main aggro target and two random players that will cause them to die if in the Twilight Realm when it expires. Players in the Normal Realm will be pulled back into the Twilight Realm upon expiration. If no players are in melee range of the boss, he will use Twilight Burst, dealing very high shadow damage to all players and increasing their shadow damage taken by 50%. This effect can stack. Finally, after 6 minutes have passed, Altraxian will use Twilight Eruption, killing himself and all players. This is a hard and rage timer and will wipe the raid. To make the fight more manageable, the aspects will grant you powerful buffs throughout the encounter. For starters, Thrall will grant all players with the last Defender of Azeroth buff at the start of the fight. This will reduce defensive cooldowns by 50% and increase their duration by 100%. Not to be outdone, toward the end of the fight, Nosdormu will buff players with Time Loop. This causes players who would be killed to instead be brought back up to 100% health. This will consume the buff. Throughout the fight, NPCs will spawn crystals that players can use to greatly increase their healing output. Each crystal has one charge and interacting with it will grant the player a powerful healing buff. Healers can only have one buff at any given time. Gift of Life, or Red Buff, spawns first. This simply increases healing done by 100%. Essence of Dreams, or Green Buff, spawns second. This copies direct healing done and distributes the amount evenly across all players. Basically, it greatly increases AoE healing. Finally, Source of Magic, or Blue Buff, spawns last. This buff grants the user 100% spell haste and 75% reduced mana cost. Now that we've covered everything that goes on in this fight, let's look at how it's done. Trust me, this fight is way easier to execute than it sounds. Positioning on this encounter is very simple. Have all players stack in front of the boss. Nobody should need to move much, if at all, throughout the encounter. As stated, all players will be pulled into the Twilight Realm when the fight begins. This will allow players to use the Heroic Will spell. One of the tricky parts of this encounter is learning how to properly do this. Heroic Will pulls players out of the Twilight Realm and returns them to the Normal Realm. While in the Normal Realm, players will be protected from Altraxian's attacks but are not able to move, attack, or cast spells. After 5 seconds, players will be returned to the Twilight Realm. Players must use Heroic Will to avoid taking damage from or being killed by Altraxian's two primary spells. Fading Light and Hour of Twilight We'll discuss Hour of Twilight first. 
Around every 45 seconds, Altraxian will begin casting Hour of Twilight. This is a very high damage spell that deals shadow damage to all players in the Twilight Realm. The damage must hit at least 3 players or the NPCs will be killed by the attack, wiping the encounter. All players not sticking around to take the damage will use their heroic will to temporarily leave the Twilight Realm. Players who stay behind for Hour of Twilight will need to use powerful damage reduction cooldowns in order to ensure their own survival. Many classes can do this, but it is important to have this assigned prior to the fight. Once Hour of Twilight has been cast once, the boss will periodically use Fading Light. This is a debuff applied to the tank and two random players. The debuff does nothing while it lasts, but upon expiration it will kill the player. Avoid death by using Heroic Will to leave the Twilight Realm before the buff falls off. This is also where a second tank will be needed to taunt the boss while the previous one leaves the Twilight Realm. It is important that all players understand how Heroic Will works and when they are required to use it. The next mechanic to understand are the NPC buffs. Throughout the fight, the NPCs will spawn 6 crystals that grant 3 different healing buffs. The red buff that increases heals by 100%, the green buff that greatly increases AoE healing, and the blue buff that grants 100% haste and reduced mana cost. The raid damage will go up as the fight goes on, so healers will need these powerful buffs to keep the raid alive. Decide who gets which buffs before the fight. Most healers can make a case for the effectiveness of each buff, so we won't tell you who to give which buff to here. Just make sure that this has been assigned so that healers can grab their buffs quickly and continue doing their jobs. Healers may only have one buff at a time and each crystal that spawns will only grant its buff once. The raid damage will become very intense toward the end, and even though no storm move gives you a buff that essentially gives the raid an extra life, don't hesitate to begin raid cooldown rotations. Keeping any player alive for a little longer can be crucial for a first kill. This fight has a 6 minute hardened rage timer that will instantly wipe the raid if you live to see it, so the raid DPS may easily be a factor in killing this boss. Overall, this is a fairly simplistic DPS check. The mechanics and spells sound much more complex than they really are, so don't get too worked up over them. For most players, it will be all about doing as much damage as possible and properly using heroic will. Assignments are a must for the healing buffs and for absorbing Hour of Twilight from the NPCs. If you found this guide helpful or informative, remember to bookmark us at LearnToRaid.com, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitch TV and Twitter. As always, we hope this guide was helpful, and we'll see you at the next boss. I wasn't feeling so good. I just didn't feel like playing anymore. So I went home, and I got all comfy and cozy and all scrunched up in front of my phonograph. I sat there and I closed my eyes and listened to all the sweet music.